All right, guys, there could be, there could be some hope for designer fragrance brands. There could be some hope at the end of this very dark designer fragrance brand tunnel. The last three designer fragrances that I have acquired and added to the collection have been pretty good. Let's discuss, shall we? <laughs> YouTube, what's going on? I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy, man. I talk about fragrances on this channel, and I often even throw in some style tips as well. Um, more timeless, elegant uh, style tips, if you will. But anyway, if that kind of content may be of interest to you, I hope you won't mind hitting subscribe. Uh, hit that little bell down there in the corner, man, and make sure you hit the bell icon as well, because I want you guys to get notified when I upload new content on the channel. All right, guys, so you heard the intro, man. Listen, I've picked up uh, three designer fragrances here over the past two months or so. Now, I have slowed down a lot on, number one, purchasing fragrances overall in general, but especially my designer fragrances, man. It's just been, you know, um, a lot of the same, a lot of the, the you know, repeats and just, you know, changing, changing a note here and there and uh, cash grabs, if you will. So you guys know how I felt about designer fragrances over the last two, two and a half years or so. It's been really, really bad. But like I said, there may be some light at the end of this dark, dark tunnel, man, because I have picked up three designer fragrances here recently and they are really, really good. Honestly, well, I know for a fact these definitely will be in the top five designer fragrances that have been released this entire year. So I wanna talk about this. I want to discuss these fragrances and how I feel like these fragrances could restore some hope for me and maybe even for some of you out there that all may not be dead as it pertains to designer fragrances. So if you want to hear my thoughts on my latest three pickups, then you guys know the routine. Keep it locked right here. Let's get The Bowtie Fragrance Guy. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. Let's jump right into this video. All right, so the first fragrance up here, this fragrance um, was released from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. And this is their latest release. Uh, and this one is Jean-Paul Gaultier Lamel Elixir. Elixir, check out the bottle. It's like you're winning an Oscar right here, man. Listen, this may be the closest some of us get to winning an Oscar, but this is it right here. Golden bottle. Um, it's actually transparent around this portion of the bottle, so you can actually see your juice in there. But, man, this is a really, really, really good fragrance. I actually have had a chance to wear this out two times. I actually wore it to work, and I wore it out and about, just running some errands and things of that nature before. And... The uh, number one, it performs really well, I wanna say that. And also the responses from people that I've gotten around have been really, really good. Uh, both times I've worn this fragrance out, I have gotten compliments on this fragrance. And I'm gonna tell you what I really love about this fragrance. Now, I wanna say this, is it a flanker? Yes. So I don't know if that's ever gonna change. I don't see in the foreseeable future, many companies getting away from making flankers, all right? The design of fragrances, that is. So, okay, let's deal with that. Dealing with that. But what I do like about some of these uh, fragrances, although they are flankers, they still, uh, when they can actually make a flanker that doesn't smell like exactly like the previous flanker to the point where it's hard to decipher the two. That's what I love about the fragrances you're gonna hear about on this list. So. What did they do here? Well, well, they maintain the integrity of the original. I do like when fragrances do that, where it's not such a far departure where you don't even know that it's a part of the collection, if it's gonna be a flanker. But they have the lavender and mint in this fragrance. And of course, you guys, one of the most popular fragrances of all time, the original Lamel, those were two of the main notes. So how do you successfully, in my opinion, make an elixir? 
which should be a darker, deeper, richer uh, interpretation of the original. Well, I think this particular fragrance shows you exactly how that's supposed to be done because they do have those notes there that's going to be remind you of the original. But my God, did they do a great job of infusing that uh, original fragrance DNA with some notes and accords that's number one, gonna make it perfect for this time of year and accomplish everything that I said that elixir should do. Well, what notes did they add in this, guys? They added some uh, honey to this particular, to this accord or to the scent DNA. They added some tobacco to this as well. So again, you get that really sexy, really rich, um, you know, qualities infused into this fragrance, obviously that you didn't have in the original. And again, it's perfect for this time of the year. It's perfect for this time of the year because, you know, the way this fragrance is composed, you will tell the moment that it hits your skin, this fragrance should be worn in cooler temperatures. And of course, we have just transitioned to the fall. So this is gonna be great for the fall and winter. Again, it smells phenomenal. Um, oh, this is so good. It smells phenomenal again. It's gotten me compliments and may get you compliments as well if you are uh, interested in that, but it's just an amazing fragrance release. Now infused with that tobacco on here as well and that honey that I talked about, that real those really sweet elements, it also has tonka bean and benzoin and vanilla. So that tonka bean and then that vanilla benzoin combination kind of gives an almost ambery feel to the fragrance as well. And again, the sweetness of tonka bean just works perfectly with the honey. And then all those sweeter accords are offset by that almost smoky in this fragrance tobacco. This is a home run. This is one I recommend you guys pick up from the brand of John Paul Gaultier. This is LaMelle Elixir. All right, guys, the next fragrance that I picked up that I really, really like, and I think, again, has is kind of helping restore my faith that Maybe even if it's uh, even if it's flankers, that's going to be if this can be at least be great, you know, it's giving me some hope. And this one from the brand of Ralph Lauren Polo. This is Ralph's Club Elixir. Here's the bottle. Looks just like the uh, the previous release. I think it was the Parfum. But what you get here is Oris, Lavender, Leather and Patchouli. Those are the main notes to this fragrance again, so it's a little bit powdery. Love the leather uh, in this fragrance. Of course, that earthiness comes in with patchouli. It just smells of the highest quality. Now, the price tag on this one is a little bit high, and I noticed that designer companies are kind of, everybody is kind of capitalizing on the elixir craze. The House of Dior uh, always starts <laughs> these trends, it seems like. Dior Survive started the blue fragrance trend, and I think they also kind of started the elixir uh, flanker uh, trend as well. And so most companies are falling, following, you know, right behind them, falling, falling suit. But um, this is an amazing fragrance. Again, quality wise, uh, scent DNA wise, this is a home run. Smells phenomenal. So this is one I highly recommend as well. Helping to restore my faith in designer fragrances from the brand of Ralph Lauren or Polo. This is Ralph's Club Elixir. All right, guys, my last and latest pickup, another fragrance that I think they did everything perfectly from the bottle to the time of year that they released this fragrance. And this is actually a brand that I don't have many fragrances from in the collection. Uh, from the brand of Boss, this is Hugo Boss Bottle Parfum. Now, I even got the box here because I just picked this one up here recently. Man, let me take it out of the box because the bottle is nice as well. Um, here's the bottle guys check that out love the bottle again black bottle but you can still see the juice inside man does this thing smell good now they actually have the notes on the back of the box but you know I've, and I've sprayed it and I've worn this fragrance but the main notes that you're going to get is the incense in the opening you definitely get that smokiness from that incense the orris is really really powdery fig I told you guys if you've been following me for a little while now, I've been talking about the note of fig for the past few months. Fig and plum has kind of been my thing uh, here in the most recent history. And this is really heavy on the fig. I really would say the oris and the fig to my nose are the two main notes because you get that powdery nuance all throughout and that fig, that sweetness. And like I said, fig almost gives almost creaminess to me, to fragrances as well. So you get a whole lot of fig and a whole lot of oris in this fragrance. And then on the dry down, to me, it really becomes about 
uh, the that leather accord. There's leather on the basis as well. And again, listen to that composition, guys. Perfect for this time of year. So these three fragrances, all three of them, I highly recommend. Uh, that last one I talked about, the boss, bo the boss bottle parfum, is going to kind of remind you of. Uh, think about um, Givenchy, the Givenchy line, Reserve Privé. Uh, think about the Dior Homes of the World. Those fragrances that really have that nice iris or orris combination there that gives that really powdery nuance. That kind of reminds me of those of those scent profiles. But again, all three of these are phenomenal fragrance releases. Um, are they flankers? Yes. But like I said. I think that's just where we are right now uh, with designer fragrances, but they are very high quality and they smell really, really good. Job well done on all three of these fragrances. I would love to hear from you guys out there. If you've experienced either of these three fragrances, what are your opinions of them? What are your opinions of designer fragrances in general? I would love to hear from you down in the comment section. And as always, I sincerely appreciate you guys' time and attention to these videos. I know you don't have to watch, but you do. And I sincerely appreciate that. Now, don't forget to make sure you take a few moments out to like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you're sharing these videos out to some other folks out there that you think could use the information or may just find it entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good. And, of course, I love to smell amazing. So, until next time, guys, keep looking good. Keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side.